Okay guys, this is a short video in which I'm going to explain to you uh, how to find the point on the, on the graph of a function on which the tangent line is horizontal. Why would this be important for us? Well, let's look at a little graph down here. Let's look at this graph and if you look at the uh, tangent line at any point here, it's not zero until you get to this point here where your tangent line will be horizontal. And when you get that, the function is going from increasing to then decreasing. <clears throat> it's not always going to be that case. It could go from decreasing here to increasing. But those points are important. It could also go from increasing to increasing or decreasing to decreasing. But those points will actually be important for us because if you think about just sections of the graph, this would be a relative maximum at that point. And I'll, I'll go into for a more detail later on, but the importance of this exercise is that, that we'll be able to find this special point. So let's see how we do it. Well, uh, the, hor the derivative, remember, is the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function. So if you want the tangent line to be horizontal, the slope of a horizontal line is zero. So what you're looking for is the points where the derivative becomes zero. So let's find the derivative, then we set it equal to zero. So here the derivative would be a third of the derivative of x cubed. You lower the three, copy the x, then raise it to the power of three minus one. Three minus one is two, plus copy the 6, then multiply times the derivative of x squared. The derivative of x squared, well, you lower the 2, copy the x, and it would be to the power of 2 minus 1, which is 1, so the exponent 1 you don't write, and then minus 11 times the derivative of x, which is 1. So you get 11, and then you set that equal to 0. So this right here is y prime, and you set it equal to 0. Negative a third, um, of 3 becomes negative x squared. Here you have 12x and then minus 11 equals 0. And then you could, if you like factoring positive numbers, you could multiply everything times negative and write it as x squared minus 12x plus 11 equals 0. And you would factor it as x minus 11 times x minus 1. When you multiply negative 1 times negative 11 gives you positive 11 and when you add it, add it you get negative 12 so that is the correct factorization and you get that uh, either x minus 11 is 0 where x would be equal to 11 or x minus 1 is 0 where x would be equal to 1. And those are your two possible solutions. Those are the x-coordinates of the points. So if you want to obtain the points themselves, you would evaluate the function. Oops, sorry, I wrote x. I wrote 11. And you would evaluate the function uh, negative a third of x cubed uh, plus uh, 6x squared minus 11x minus 50 at 11. And the same you would do here at, and actually this point would be end because you'd have those two points, at those two points the tangent line would be horizontal. So you would evaluate the function at 1 and you'd obtain the results. And uh, and that gives you, well, I'll, I'll not, I will not calculate that, but you plug them in and you get this point right here. Uh, here's 11, that should be a vertical line. <laughs> Let's say that's the vertical line. And then you get 11, comma, and it's somewhere up here above 100 and then uh, 1 comma something below negative 50. So those are your points where the horizontal, the tangent line is horizontal. Okay, So we're going to be doing that later on to solve some um, pro applied problems or application problems. Alright, but that's all for this one and uh, that's it.